How do you everyone? Um, today's going to be a bass video, so uh, I would say any non-bass players turn off now, but you might actually find this interesting, because hopefully this will give you some insight as to why some bass players use more strings than just four. Uh, with me today I have a four string bass, a five string bass, a six and a seven string bass. So we're going to talk about why you would have more than four strings, what you can do with them, is it excessive? Let's find out. So this is a four string bass that I've had for a long time. Um, it's all made from maple, it's got a very thin neck. And it's an absolutely fantastic piece of work. But then I also have a five, six and seven like I was saying. Um, I originally learnt on a four string bass, but it wasn't very long before 14 year old me found the five string bass and I ended up with an awful maiden career, Jackson. But um, I found it was more difficult to play on, but I learnt a lot. Now a four string bass, as far as I can tell, was kind of invented by Leo Fender, pretty much just as kind of an electric version of the upright double bass. So all he did was put it an octave down and remove the two, the B and E strings. So what you end up with is this, where you've got E, A, D, and G. As you can hear, I, I like to have a reasonable amount of gain on my sound. Play rather gently, that goes and it's a clean amp again. Uh, but this is a very versatile bass, and I find that four strings, particularly because they've got quite a thin neck, I can do this thing that I shouldn't really do, which is have my thumb over the top. But it also means that when I use proper technique and put my thumb in the middle of the backboard, I have a very big range where I can stretch a long way. And uh, the four string lends itself very well to a kind of a, an easy fluid playing, so I can do slap and because there's no strings either side here I can play an open E very cleanly by going and that's very easy to do very clean uh, so I can go So we don't need to say too much about the four string, let's move on to a five. Okay, so this is a five string. This is a one-off handmade Roberts, much like the last one was a one-off handmade Erlwine. So the brands are, on all of these actually, not kind of particularly important to what I'm trying to say. Because of course, if you compare four string basses, you can compare masses like precision bass, jazz bass, uh, Yamaha's offerings, Warwick, yada, 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 yada. This is more of a Warwick style design with a very thick neck. But what I'm trying to kind of convey here is that this ex this extra bottom string, where the E string is 100 gauge, which is the thickness of the string, that's kind of 100, 105. The B string is 135. This is a real monster and this is down tuned another fourth. So that's the bottom note of a four string bass. And these four strings are exactly the same in this kind of tuning as a four string, but from here I can go down. And the first thing you'll think is, oh, well that's only for metal then, because metal guys don't want to down tune and go really low. And that's kind of what I thought at first, because I was kind of into new metal when I was a teenager, I was into corn and Limp Biscuit and all that kind of... Uh... All that kind of thing, or 
really kind of doing the whole kind of fieldy thing of sticking it down here and kind of going doing the kind of that kind of thing and it, it gets very silly but let's drop the jack out there and what I actually found that fifth string useful for is that that E to play in that register with that bottom E, I, on a four string, I have to have my hand down in the first five frets. And I personally like to play a lot more up around the seventh fret, so that kind of... And having that extra bottom string allowed me to play that E instead of open down here, play it on the fifth fret up here, which meant I could go... And as, as I learned and progressed and looked at things like octave shapes, uh, which are for me one of the foundations of bass playing, that kind of... <laughs> having that extra string really gave me that kind of dynamic extra kind of... Didn't have to be pumping around the neck to go uh, from one to the next. But five string wasn't quite enough for me because the next thing is that I uh, I, thought I, I, was ne I wasn't necessarily thinking more strings is better, so more strings please. But I came across a band that I hadn't heard before called Dream Theatre. So this is a six string bass and I spent the majority of my uh, late teens and twenties uh, playing a six string bass and I got a lot of funny looks and that's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to make a video like this is to explain kind of what a six string bass is, why you might have one, what you can do with it. Uh, because I was introduced to the six string bass by John Myung from Dream Theatre. Um, in the mid nineties he started playing six string bass and started doing things with harmonics that I hadn't heard before and with using more than one register at the same time because a five string bass can go all the way down to B and so can a six string bass. It's got the extra B string, which means I can do all the kind of grrrr. But it also has an extra high string and it's not a high B. It doesn't go E, A, D, G. B, like it would on a guitar, it goes C at the top. And the reason is that bass players think in perfect fourths all the time, and that's how we work, because we're not usually trying to make big complicated chords. The frets are too far apart and the strings uh, just don't suit that style of playing like they would on an electric guitar. So instead, we use them to have an extra range and to be able to do things like kind of to be able to throw in these high chord voicings that can in particularly light sections of a song really add something or it means that you don't have to be left out of the conversation and another band that I got into recently Carnival that was a piece that uh, that they, they uh, really, I can't remember what that one's called, I think it's Umbra? It's from uh, Sound Awake, but it's the bass player that plays this part. And so on, and that uh, is uh, really refreshing to me because on a four string bass you can play it but you're so high up the neck 
that mm. the tight spacing becomes quite difficult to slide around in and also getting back down the neck for the <laughs> section of that song becomes quite difficult whereas having all these extra strings means that I can uh, jump around. I also the, the whole harmonics thing that used to be a big part of my bass playing and uh, there was a song by the band that was in Spider Book where uh, the whole main verse riff revolved in the end around a bass part with harmonics including a top C string so it went kind of And because there are so many extra strings, I can lift my hand up so I'm not deadening those top strings and let them ring. And by letting one part ring while I move to the next part, that really added some movement. It's actually quite a complex bass part, but all I was thinking in my head was uh, the notes that I'd want to. And throwing that uh, added fourth in there, just... really opened that up for me. And I found that having that top C string, especially as, as a young 20-something, I was doing a lot of session work and I didn't know what I'd be playing or who I'd be playing it for, and having these extra strings actually makes it easier to play, not more difficult. I mean, the neck is quite big, but if you're holding it properly, you actually hold it in your hand, kind of like a sock puppet. Hello. Hello. So, that grip position is what goes around the neck, and if you do it properly, I'm actually reaching off the end of the fretboard there whilst not stretching, so people saying, oh, well, how do you get up to that string if you're playing properly like this? Not a problem. So now I shall introduce you to uh, something that my dad bought recently that's uh, interesting. So this is an HK seven string bass, and I've never played a seven string before this one, and it's kind of insane, it's a bit much for me to be honest, but it's a lot of fun. And it goes, instead of going further down, it goes further up, so it's got an extra C string, then an extra F string, so it goes... So you can do full voiced chords all the way all the way up to uh, two octaves above that F so that's way into guitar territory by that point but it feels quite nice to play and it's probably a little too much. The neck really is like an ironing board at this point. With my hand in the proper position, I'm just about reaching that B string without really struggling. And uh, it's interesting how uh, it's a little bit out there with these two salt bar pickups, which is probably the only pickups you could get that would reach this far. It's got a really versatile set of uh, sounds on it, but going from that bottom B, One thing that I am finding difficult with these extra strings, uh, just to kind of balance both sides out, is I'm finding it quite difficult to damp all these strings. So one thing I'm not doing is uh, playing with a pick at this point because this many strings, um, I'm kind of hooking my thumb over to say if I was going to play 
an A string, I'm really struggling to damp that top string. So. Yeah, I'm finding it quite difficult to stop them all. And as well, at this number of strings, something like slap, um, there's always gonna be an extra string in the way that makes you have to be more accurate. There are guys out there who are so accurate that they can do that, but I, out of kind of lack of practice, I'm not one of them anymore, so. Also, the way that I slap on a four string bass um, I can use my thumb to feel for the very last string and I can use these two fingers to feel for the last outer string which is the E and the G and from there I don't have to do much movement whereas with this I miss a lot of the time because my fingers are going to expect a G string and either get a C or an F string. Another thing that's worth noting is these uh, higher string basses do sound different to lower string basses. And yes, it's partly because of the pickups and because of the wood, but it's also partly because look at the size of this neck. That is a lot more wood for the uh, sound from the, the neck to transfer through. And also it's a lot more tension on this neck than it is on a four string neck, which means that the neck has to be reinforced there are usually carbon fiber rods and maybe two or even, I've never seen three, but I've seen two truss rods before in a neck to try and keep it straight and keep the balance right. And it really changes the tone because the, uh, the extra amount of wood makes for a very different instrument. I mean, why do electroacoustic guitars sound different to electrics? It's partly because of the uh, amount of wood involved and yeah, this is a very different beast to the four that I started with, and I can really tell. So I'm gonna try and play the same riff in a on each of these bases now, one by one, so I can give you a back to back, and uh, then we'll talk more. So very different tonalities, of course, like I said, some of it's partly to do with the pickups, which I all set flat on those before I did those demos. And partly it's to do with the wood and the response of the neck. I find it much easier to play on a four now, uh, having played on many, many strings for many years. Uh, so I'm not sure I'll be having these around much longer. They'll probably be going on eBay and I'll be back to a four before you know it. And then of course a client will say, oh, can you play this in drop A? And it'll be like, oh, but hey, that's what you get. So I um, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you found it useful, please give us a like and uh, subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, we have a new Patreon page as well. Please check that out. That really is going to help us go a long way. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.